the British came and they wanted to take a census. People had to write their caste and then it was stuck. So the caste system has to be deregulated in that sense. And in the future, people will choose their caste. Whenever we, there is a conversation with atheists, they particularly degrade us, the Sanatanais, uh, especially for the caste system. Is it that the system is good or is it good to avoid going forward, the caste system? The caste system is actually a system that has been hardened by the advent of the British into India. Before that, the caste system was not so rigid. Today, someone is a Kshatriya, tomorrow they become a Vaishya. They change with a generation, they would change to the next caste. Whichever suited them, they did. So the caste system only hardened into this very rigid structure that you see today because the British came and they wanted to take a census, which in itself was not something common to this subcontinent. So when they took the census, people had to write their caste and then it was stuck. After that, they couldn't change the caste because in the next census, they would question them as to how is it possible. First you say you're this, then you say you're that. Because the British did not have an idea at all about where they were, who these people were, and what was going on here. No clue at all. They came from a rigid, monotheistic, narrow, iconoclastic, limited system that had no clue or concept about where they had landed and what on earth was going on here. So the caste system has to be deregulated in that sense. And in the future, people will choose their caste. If somebody is more interested in learning the Shastras, learning the scriptures, in being a teacher, in being a guru, in being a, a priest, they will call themselves Brahmanas. If someone is more interested in becoming a policeman, being in the army, doing other protection work, a Gurkha, a guard, they will call themselves Kshatriyas. Soldiers who join the army, generals, all of those various titles, they will be calling themselves Kshatriyas. And the same for Vaishyas, and the same for Shudras. Shudras were not a low caste. The caste system was an egalitarian system. And the, and the, the fifth caste of the, of the Adivasis, what they call the Vanvasis, actually, the people who lived in the forests, who did not live in the cities, they had a separate caste. These were all egalitarian systems. And they were hardened into a, into a hierarchical system by the British, and it suited the British to become derogatory about the priests, the Brahmins, because of what was happening in Europe shortly before, where there was the, the big problems faced by the priestly castes of, of the Vatican, the castes, I use that word, by the priestly groups that had fallen into activities which can't be mentioned here and which were then considered to be corrupt to the core. They extrapolated that to the systems here in India and started to describe the Brahmins as being corrupt as being things that they were not. The Brahmins had their way, the Kshatriyas had their way, the Vaishyas had their way, the Shudras had their way, and it was egalitarian. So this disruption of that egalitarian system by making it hierarchical, and then cutting off the head, which was the knowledge. If the people who hold the knowledge of a society are denigrated and destroyed and, and sent to the gallows, what is going to happen to that society? It was a thought through, conscious attempt at somehow or the other suppressing this crazy, anarchic, wild subcontinent that they had no idea how to handle. So we have to rejuvenate that. The decolonization process is also a process of, of, of reinstating the, 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 
the strength of a system. And taking it forward, you choose your caste. What is your caste? You choose your caste. You need a gotra, take the rishi who you feel a connection to and make that your gotra and take it forward from there.